Amen. And for what he has done in our lives, turn me up just a little bit on three. Come on, can we really stand to our feet and worship just a little bit? Amen. He said that his house should be known as a house of prayer. Before we even pray, can we set the atmosphere in this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody start ushering in his presence. When you walked in, he walked in with you. So let's magnify him today. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy of all the praise, Father God. Glory to your name, Father God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Come on, somebody start worshiping him with me. Hallelujah. 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 Start thanking him for what he has done in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank him for what he will do in your life. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all the praise, God. You are worthy of all the praise, Lord. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You deserve it and not us, God. We give it to you, Father God. Get the glory right now, Father God. Get the glory from our praise, Lord. Get the glory from our lips right now, Father God. Get the glory today, Father God. Get the glory, get the glory, get the glory, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We offer up a praise that is like none other, Father God. A praise that comes from our spirit that shows that we are we are grateful for you, Father God. And it is by your tender grace and mercy that we are able to be here today, Father God. Hallelujah. The word says that the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Come on, if you know that you are creation from the creator, can we give him praise for it? Because it is by his grace that has kept us here this long. It is by his mercy that kept us here this long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not by our own power, but by yours, God. We submit to your will, Father God. Let your will be done, Father God. Not our will, but thy will be done, Father God. Your will, Father God, before our own, Father. Your agenda before our own, Father God. Your needs before our own, Father God. Your wants before ours, Father God. We pray right now that your desires fill our hearts so our wants become yours. Our needs become your needs, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we thank you right now. We are eternally grateful right now, Father. We've seen some stuff today that made us have to recap on our lives to show that we are not really worthy, Father God. So we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Don't let us get high uh, 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 on our high horse with these types of things. But you can easily switch the situation by just saying one thing, Father God. So we say thank you right now, Father God. We say thank you right now, Father God. For we're not outside pushing a shopping cart, Father God. We're not having to sleep on a brick as a pillow, Father God. We say thank you right now, Father God. We say thank you right now, Father, that we're not in the midst of a war, Father God. We don't have bullets flying over our heads, Father God. We say thank you right now, Father God. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for this position right now, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful, Father God. We are we're so humbled by it, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the situation could be worse. We thank you, Father God, for it could be worse, Lord. It could be much worse, God. So we say thank you for having us here today, Lord. You placed us here, Father God, to show those who are in those positions that you don't have to stay there. But I know of a man that can turn your life around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the answer to everyone's problems and everyone's questions. And you are the answer, God. I pray that whenever people come to us with a problem, we point them in your direction. And they may think that it's us that's answering the problem, but no, it's you. It is you, Lord. Let them see our good works, but glorify you. Let you get the glory from this, Father God. Get the glory from our life right now, Father God. Get the glory today, Father God. I pray that you cause a shift right now in this atmosphere, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, Lord. 
We welcome you. We invite you in to take complete control right now, Father God. Take it over right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Do what you see fit, Father God. Do as you see fit, Father God. Move how you want to move in this place, Father God. Direct us today, Father God, and speak to us, Lord. We, we came expecting something. We came expecting your word, Father God. Speak to us through your word today, Father God. Let your word go in one ear and marinate inside of us, Father God. Let it go into our spirit and get deep down in us, Father God. Let it become a part of us and not just a piece of paper on a word, Father. Uh, uh, words on a paper, excuse me. Let it get in us, Father God. And teach us today, Father God. Teach us. We need to be taught, Father God. Let us take notes on your word, Father God, and how you did it, Father God. I pray that you continue to te uh, teach us your voice, Father God. You said your sheep know your voice, Father God. I pray that you let us tune out those that are not of you, Father God, and really listen to you, Lord. When you tell us something, let us steal away to confirm and talk to you even more, Lord. I pray that it, we don't let it be common that we call on you in the bad times, Lord. Don't let, it, don't let it be that we only call on you when we're in a mess, Father God. But let us call on you even when our skies are blue and the birds are chirping, Father. Let you be an everyday and an all-day God, Father. Not just a Wednesday and a Sunday, God. But walk with us daily, Father God. You walk with us daily. Let us acknowledge you and talk to you daily, Father God, and get closer, Lord. We long to be closer to you, Father God. We long to love more of you, Father God. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins that are known and unknown. And just let us repent right now, Father God. Let you be the center of our lives, Father God. Let you be our motive, Lord. When they ask, why are we doing this? We say, because Jesus did it for me. When they say, why are you loving so hard? Because he loved me. Even when I didn't deserve it, Father God. We love you, we glorify you, and we honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. All those who are in agreement, can we say amen? amen. Come on, can we really glorify our Father just a little bit? If he is truly worthy of all the praise. Come on, I know we got a program where we have songs to sing, but can we magnify the Lord even without the music just a little bit? Set the atmosphere for the worship. Hallelujah. Come on, invite him in. Let it be a let it be like a midst in here, Father. Come on, stir him up just a little bit. Open up your mouth. Clap your hands and rejoice for the Lord is here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, anybody know that the Lord is worthy? Come on, I can't hear nobody. Is the Lord worthy in your life? Has he done something for you? So he's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. See, the Bible says that when Jesus came into the temple, that his train filled the room. So, of course, to the word you hear. So, this is a real simple song. I want y'all to just sing along with us, okay? Just a call and response. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always taking away. Always taking away. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, Yeah. 
Praise him, hallelujah. I said, let's praise him, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, if you know that he's worthy, can you lift your hands and open up your mouth and tell him? Come on, let's not play with it. Come on, let's just take about 15 seconds to open up our mouths and let our praise be expressive to how worthy God is. Come on, hallelujah. We give you glory, you're worthy, Jesus. Hey, Rabbi Sian I said, we give you glory because you're worthy Jesus yes you are I said you're worthy hallelujah 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 not only is he worthy because he's worthy he's chosen us and we give him glory because he's decreed and declared that this is our season hallelujah come on look at somebody and say it's our season come on you gotta say it like you really mean it come on open up your mouth and say it's our season I don't care what's going on in the land. Matter of fact, they said a famine is happening. And the Bible says that in the time of famine, the righteous shall flourish. Come on, it's our season. Come on. The economy is going crazy. That means it's our season. Come on. The stock market is a little funny right now. That's an indication that it's my season. Y'all playing. Come on, Pastor. Let's sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. It's my season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands in the sanctuary. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I should be faithful to God has a purpose and I know he's able I've got a seed in the ground that is blessing no more stressing I've got a seed in the ground and I know that it shows the seed Like you mean to say, this, this is, is my season to reap what I have. Everybody say, this is my season for grace and for favor. This Lord, I believe this is my season to reap what I have. Come on, say, so everything is working. So come on, everybody sing it. Say this. Uh, this, this is my season for grace, for grace and for favor. for favor. I need you to sing it like you mean it. Say this, this is, is my season to reap what I. What one more time. I have come on, say. So come on, everybody say. Say this is, this is my season for grace, for grace and for favor. For favor. Come on, you gotta prophesy over your own this life. Say. To reap what I, I have so, so everything is work Everything is working Together Together so for, my good. for my good I don't care what it looks like You gotta tell yourself Everything is working Together Together For my good For my good Yes Lord it is all Everything is working Together For my good Good. Yes, it is, Lord. Everything, Everything is working together, together so for my good. For my good. Yeah. Come on, say, say, this is my season. Come on, say, for, for grace, grace, for favor, for favor. Yes, Lord, it is so. This yeah. is my season to reap, to, to reap what I have. So. 
If you believe it, I dare you to open up your mouth right here. Come on, the enemy been trying to play with you, but you ought to tell that devil in his face that it's your season. You are playing. Come on, I dare you to open up your mouth right here. Come on. In the face of adversity, in the face of pain, in the face of trial, you ought to open up your mouth and say it is my season. I said it is my season. It is my season. Yes, Lord. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is my season to read, to read what I have sown. Hallelujah. Come on. We come on. Put your hands together one more time for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Put your hands together like you really mean it. Come on. Come on. If you know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are the called according to his purpose, you ought to open up your mouth. Oh, y'all playing. We welcome you tonight to Boot Camp Bible Study. I'm so pleased and honored to say that our visionary and leader of this great movement is none other than our very own Pastor Mustafa. Can you celebrate our leader tonight? Come on, we can do better than that. Our destiny is in his mouth. You ought to open up your mouth. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. And we celebrate the woman of God that stands next to his side. Can we celebrate our awesome first lady tonight come on and as you're clapping i need you to clap for yourself tonight is that all right hallelujah let us read and recite our mission statement basic ministries exist as the church of the 21st century to help heal empower lead and prosper god's people and their community in order to bring glory to our father which is in heaven amen Amen. For we know that God is a spirit and where does he live? Amen. Do me a favor and go greet somebody that you did not come to church with tonight and tell them that you love them. Come on. It's our season, y'all. about what the Lord is doing here at Basic Ministries. Come on, can you put your hands together for what God is doing here? Amen. At your church. I said this is your church. Hallelujah. So we are so excited. Let's remember that a scripture a day, it definitely keeps the devil away. This week we are in 2 Kings chapter 9 through verse 14. Again, we are in 2 Kings chapter 9 through verse 14. And this week brother Lorenzo will be battling sister Kanika. Amen. <clears throat> so we are excited about that. Excuse me, y'all. First Roots with Pastor Moon every Monday through Friday. Amen. Starting promptly at 7 o'clock a.m. Amen. So we want to make sure that we are on Zoom and prayer and intercession. Amen. Amen. Every Monday through Friday. Amen. We are excited that we are happy to report that we have fed over 3,674 families here at Basic Ministries. And we feed here every Wednesday, starting setting up at 12 noon. And we start distributing groceries at 2 o'clock p.m. And we celebrate the wonderful we feed my sheep. Feed. 
Amen. Glory to God. Be my sheep staff who's doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Amen. If you would like to sign up, please make sure that you see Minister Alex. Amen. Amen. Our principal are, is still looking for our packets. Amen. She has not given up the faith. Amen. So please make sure, brothers and sisters, that you please turn in your packets. Amen. As soon as possible. Amen. We are excited. Amen. About our basic ministries training that will be happening. Amen. Amen. That will be happening today. Amen. Tonight. Amen. So for those who have not, amen, done your training online, that's all right. We have you covered. Amen. And you will be doing your training tonight with Lady Nail. Amen. Amen. If you have not, amen, if, if you still need to, amen, because you're only going over part one tonight. Amen. You can do part two and three, amen, on your leisure time, amen, at www.jointhemovement.com. Amen. I'm excited that we are a church that believes in what? Maximum participation. Amen. This is a church, amen, where we need everybody to participate. Amen. And you can see myself or our wonderful church administrator, Sister Shar. amen, and we will point you into a right to the right direction amen so many wonderful ministries that you can join here at basic ministries i'm excited that pastor released his single last month amen on the 14th amen we still want to make sure that we are streaming downloading and purchasing amen yes sir pastor lord willing brothers and sisters this monday if you are available amen this monday hey, we will be shooting the music video to fall off amen so I'm going to need some brothers, I'm going to need some men, amen, to come with me, amen. We're going to be shooting, amen, in uh, the PAL gym, amen, So I'll, in Richmond, California. So I'll let you know about that, amen, uh, but it's going to be dope, amen. So I do need some brothers, amen, amen, uh, at 1030, so it's going to be all day, and yes, ma'am, at Richmond PAL. Amen, because it's a it's a get back video, so it's like in a boxing ring and a whole nine. So it's gonna be beautiful, y'all. Uh, so 10:30, but then prepare. I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about that on text thread. Uh, but then prepare. Amen for the, really the day. Amen. Amen. We're excited. Amen. Amen. We're also excited. Amen. That Trap Ministries will be returning this Sunday. Amen. Come on. Let's put our hands together for that. Amen. We know that we do Trap Ministries here every first and third Sunday. Uh, first Sunday is Team Joshua. Third Sunday is Team John the Baptist. But since we did not uh, have Trap Ministries this first Sunday, pastors asking for everyone to join us this Sunday. Amen. As we go and tell our brothers and sisters about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's make sure that we are there. Amen. 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 Basic Ministries, I am a witness evangelism training. Amen. If you missed last week, you missed a treat. It was an awesome training. Amen. Amen. But we're having another one on November 2nd, and then we're having our final one on November 16th. Amen. So we want to make sure, amen, that we are at least one of at one of these trainings. Amen. Before we go, amen, to L.A. for our mission trip. Amen. We're excited that on October 29th, amen, community block party at Nevin Park. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to make sure, amen, that we are there to support our pastor. Amen. There's going to be so many wonderful giveaways, free food, free haircut, free clothes, and free groceries. Amen. And our pastor will be spearheading this event. Amen. Basic Ministries will have our own table there. Amen. And we are so excited about that. So let's make sure that we are there. Amen. To love on the community. And we also want to make sure that we are there to support our leader. Amen. Amen. Mission trip. Amen. November 25th. We are excited. Amen. That we are going on our mission trip. How many people going on a mission trip? Raise your hand if you're going. Amen. So we are so excited about that. Amen. So the time is getting closer and we need people to start making payments, saints. Amen. How many people going on a mission trip? 
Amen. And the time is getting closer and we need people to start making payments. Amen. Amen. So please make sure, amen, at least that at least you communicate, amen, brothers and sisters with Lady Nell. Please, amen, because we really need to get a head count. When you are going out of town, you have to prepare beforehand. Amen. We can't book rooms at 3 a.m. on November 25th. Amen. Amen. We have to do it before then. Amen. Just talk to Lady Nell and communicate with her. Amen. And we will get you all set. Amen. Amen. I'm excited that Basic Ministries is on a mission. Amen. We had an awesome time this past Sunday. Amen. At the Bay Area Rescue Mission. And you can join us every second Sunday in Richmond, California. Amen. Where we are telling the people about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are in the midst of launching our second campus. And we are excited about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. So join us every second Sunday at the Bay Area Rescue Mission. Pastor will be ministering, amen, at the Invasion Live Musical Festival. Amen. This is a part of our mission trip. Amen. Amen. So on the 26th, we're going to go, amen, and bombard the stage with Pastor at this live music festival. And we are excited about that. Amen. I am. Y'all jaws in. I'm getting on the stage. I might go give me a grill on purpose. I'm just by Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't never scared. Amen. Purchase your church t-shirts today. Amen. Do not purchase your church t-shirts today. Amen. Purchase your Obey hoodies today. We can have some of these available. Amen. Please make sure that you see Lady Dale. Amen. And they only cost $45. Now, y'all, I'm excited. I can't reveal it now because I ain't got permission. But Filthy Rags is getting ready to do some amazing things. Amen. And we need. Amen. We trying to take over the world. If you, you buy Gucci, you better buy Filthy Rags. Amen. So we are excited. Amen. About what God is getting ready to do. Amen. It is Bible drill time. Amen. Let's prepare ourselves as roll call win again. Amen. Ladies, 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 are you here? Where are my lioness? Okay. We, we got to take this, y'all. They got me last week. They got us last week. But we, we got this tonight, right? All right. Robles in the air. 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 The chapter and the verse, you have to find it. Stand to your feet and shout amen without flipping. You got me? Say, I got you, lady now. All right, here we go. Hold your Bibles up. Here we are. You ready? You ain't ready? All right. Somebody please find for me. Zechariah 6 and 13. Zechariah 6, 13. There's always a thing. Pay attention. Oh, mama and daughter. Who want to go first? Either one. Amen. That's the word. Line S1.
That's the word. Five was up. Five was up. Five was up. Come on, ladies. One and one. Can you please find for me? Hebrew. Four. Hebrew. Four. Fourteen. Hebrew. Four. Fourteen. All right, Sha. Sha, you flip it. No. Nuh-uh. Lioness. Lioness. Any lioness, you got it. Anybody? Hey, Amen. That's the word. Line is two. We'll call one. Good job. Put your bobbles in the air, bobbles in the air, bobbles in the air, bobbles in the air, put your bobbles in the air, 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 That's the word. All right. Tiebreaker, tiebreaker. Who's going to get it? Put your bobbles in the air. Bobbles in the air. Bobbles in the air. Bobbles in the air. Put your bobbles in the air. 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 Give it up, Wayne, man. He did that. He single-handedly put us on the back and led us to victory. Amen, amen. Before we do our dismissal until our uh, basic training, Janelle will be teaching, Lady Nell, forgive me, will be teaching a basic training on this night. Amen. But before we get there, brothers and sisters, it is our job to equip uh, you in being able to evangelize, amen. And so I want to do just a quick uh, skit, amen. First, let me make sure, let's, yeah, please, let's make sure everybody has one, though. Those are our six steps to the kingdom, amen. You're going to be hearing this a lot on Wednesday, Sunday, because it is our job, brothers and sisters, as the body of Christ to win souls, to lead people to Jesus, what was the priest's job, amen, to make sure people followed in the way of the Lord, followed in the way of God, amen, recognize God. That is the church's job, brothers and sisters, to make sure God's people worship him. Are y'all with me? That's, that's our job. That's our job. That is our great commission, amen, that we go out and make disciples of God, amen, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded us, and he'll say he'll be with us always, even until the end of the age. That is your job. Amen. So our job is to equip you, to strengthen you, to get you the word. Amen. To disciple you. Why? So that you go make disciples. Amen. Not to just uh, get you to come here and just stay here. Our job is to be able to equip you, to send you. Are y'all listening to me? We want to equip you to send you. So who, give me two people who would like to volunteer. And let me say this, this is, come on, Brother Tino. This is the place you make your mistakes. In practice, we used to tell our football players, in practice, we, 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 it's okay to make mistakes because this is where we can correct you at, right? But when you get in the game, we need you to know your stuff. So I'm going to ask you to go over the six steps. Who's going to be my evangelist and who's going to be, amen, the person being evangelized too? Okay. So you want to go. I'm going to let you go first then. You're the evangelist. 
and you'll be the sinner. Amen. <laughs> I'm joking. Saved by, not yet. No. Amen. 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 So, Brother Tino, going through the six steps, I'm going to ask you to evangelize to my sister. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, cool, cool. I, 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 don't, I don't need much. Uh, I was just going to ask you, uh, do you have a relationship with Jesus by any chance? I used to go to church when I was younger with my grandma. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me stop you right there. Uh, do you have a relationship? That's like more so just like a person, like how you talk to right now, like how you call your partner. I didn't fit through the mud. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't fail, but I didn't fall off. Uh, and 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 uh, you know, I, I I was addicted to drugs, alcohol. I've been molested. I had sex with trannies. I had sex with men. And but by the grace of God, and I was in gang wars and all this stuff. But by the grace of God, He brought me up, and now I'm shining like a diamond. You see me though? Oh, bro. Hey, but anyway, I was gonna tell you, right? Uh, Man, I seen the hurt and the pain from a mile away. But look, I know a man. Let me, you know, uh, so if you don't mind, can we read this uh, Bible verse one time? Yeah. That ain't going to take long. I, I swear to you, I, I got to go to church anyway. I'm late. Uh, okay, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died. Oh, repeat after me, sir. Let's pray. Can you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I believe, help me, Father. I believe that you died on the cross and were buried on the third day. God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I receive you into my heart. As my Lord and my Savior, lead me protect me and save me. So, sis, I was just going to ask you, based on that prayer that we just said out loud, where do you think Jesus is? Or dwells? That's right, that's right, sis. God bless you. And uh, I was just going to say, too, when Jesus died, he died on the cross to save us from death. He paid the price. He paid that debt. And now, all he wants back is a relationship. Lord, help me with this. Help me with that. Help me with it. Help me being single. Help me with my with my bills. Help me all day, 24-7. It ain't no limit. Uh, so, you know, you just got to call on that name. And I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. Life going to happen. But when it happens, guess what? You ain't alone. Let's give it up for him. Let's give it up for him. Let's give it up for him. You want to go, sis? All right, let's give it up for him. Real quick, Tino, amen. I, I, I like the, you're natural at it, amen. But, but, of course, as you learn the script, it'll get more fluent, fluent. But always start off with, may I have a moment of your time. 
always start off with that first, then go into the rest. Because like I said, we want to make sure people welcome us. Amen? They welcome. Once they say, yeah, boom, it's on you now. Amen. But good job. Good job. Good job. Everything else is good. Explain the gospel with your testimony. Explain the gospel with your testimony. Even though you did say it at the end, of course, the sinner's prayer, that's a sinner's prayer. So that's not a Bible verse. But but it comes from, what verse does that come from? Romans 10 and 9. That's what that, that's what that prayer comes from, Romans 10 and 9. So everybody, amen, remember, if there's one verse you should remember, is Romans 10 and 9. You should know that by heart. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt remember that verse. Amen? Amen. I'm Shanae. What's your name? Young Bobo. I'm Shanae, Young Bobo. I hate to see you with that frown on your face. I understand you're angry, but I hate to see you with that frown on your face because I know, I know one thing for sure. And and I'm, I want to share something with you. Do you have a moment before I even get into all that? Because I, I this, this look on your face, I don't like it. And I see it and, and, and I feel led to share some good news with you. I got some good news, and, 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 and let's talk. Let's talk about it. You got a minute? Good. So I am out here just spreading the love of Jesus Christ. Um, I come out here every week just to tell the people that the Lord loves them and that he has. It's not about religion. Let me tell you about me. It's not about religion with me. Do you see this red lipstick on my lip? It's not about religion with me. The church, a lot of people in the church wouldn't even wouldn't even approve of this. So I'm not about religion. I met Jesus in my living room between my couch and my TV on the floor. It's where I met Jesus. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And it's real. It's a real thing. It's a real relationship. So I understand what you're going through right now, but can I tell you that, that it's, Life is so much bigger than what you think it is, and I know you. What, what I know you had a little spat with your your BM. You said, but there's a man named Jesus who can really fix that for you. Any situation that you're going through, he can really fix it for you. And I'm not saying it because I heard about it. I'm saying it because I've experienced it. And I wouldn't be out here telling you no trash because I get nothing for this but to glorify the Lord. So I'm I'm only here telling you what I know because I believe it can help you. I love you, bro. That's the only reason I stopped you. Amen. Good. See? Smile. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm here for. Amen. Well, so Jesus, um, the good news I want to share with you is that Jesus died on the cross. You know that, right? For sinners. To, to wash away your sin so that you can be reconciled with God. Have you ever heard that before? So, you know you a sinner, right? Okay, okay. And so what Jesus did, look, who you telling? I didn't see some sin, and I, 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 I fall short of the glory every day. The Bible even says that I, I fall short of the glory every day, and it's true. I'm not standing here perfect, but I know him for myself. And what he, what he does every day is he renews me and gives me new mercies every day. New mercies to start over fresh every day. I get a new start every day with Jesus. You can't? No, you can't. So it's about relationship. And you know when you're in a relationship with somebody, you want to please them, right? Like your being when y'all was cool, right? When y'all wasn't funky. Yo, 
when y'all when you was when y'all was cool, you know how you wanted to spend time with her, you wanted to love on her, you wanted to just you know chill with her. That's the that's the relationship I'm talking about with Jesus, and we know that um, when you really get to know him, you know that your sin breaks his heart, right? And I I just want to share with you that there, that he went to Calvary for you, for you specifically, for your sin specifically, so that you can be reconciled, brought back into relationship with God because your sin, my sin, separate, separated us from him. And so Jesus went to the cross so that you could be made whole and so that you can have life abundantly now and eternally forever. Life. Life. Not just, li- not just existing, but life full of joy, peace, and love. Life. You might have some stressful things. Like I, I, I'm, I, I go through stuff every day, but I'm never alone in what I'm going through. I'm never alone. Sorry if I'm getting too close to you, but I'm passionate about this thing. But I'm never alone when I go through what I'm going through. Jesus is always with me. He's a friend to me and a savior and a provider and a protector. So if you don't mind, can, I, can, we, can you pray with me? Do you want, you, want, you want this Jesus that I'm speaking of? Do you want to get to know him? It'll be the best thing you ever did. Amen. Can I hold your hand? Amen. Let's get out. Uh, Bobo? Shani Bobo. Okay. Can you say, Lord Jesus? buried on the third day. God the Father raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open up the door to my heart and I receive you into my heart. As my Lord and my Savior, lead me, Jesus, with Lord and Savior. And my Lord and Savior, that means you're, you're redeemed. When you when you when you think of a savior, you think of being rescued, right? Someone coming to your rescue and save you, and risk you out of all of the trouble you would be in. Save you, okay, right? Okay, okay. Amen. Say, Lord, lead me, Jesus. Protect me, Jesus. Protect me. Save me. According to the well, the Bible says that if you can, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you shall, uh, you shall, you shall be saved. Amen. Right. Um, so, and according to the prayer we just prayed, um, where is Jesus now? Is he far away? probably over there too though. <laughs> amen. But according to he's in your heart, amen. And, and, and I, if, if you don't mind, I got some bros in Christ. If you need if you need to stay connected, I would encourage you to stay connected. I got some strong men of God that I know that is willing to walk with you and talk with you to ask you questions. If you don't mind sharing your number with me, I can get you connected. Amen. Jobs, we got, we we do have things. When you enter the kingdom of God, everything you need is provided. So with you now being a part of the family of God, every need will be met in God's timing. Amen. In God's timing. <laughs> Come on, let's give it up for her. That was good. 
Now he's an actor. No. <laughs> amen, amen. That was good. That was good. We have to become very uh, familiar with sharing the gospel. And, and I like some of the things he did because everybody's not going to be like that, just straight with you and talking to you. You're going to have some people saying some stuff, saying some stuff crazy. You're gonna, so you have to know how to always bring the conversation back to Jesus. We're going to go out there and we're coming back here. Amen. And spreading the gospel. But we all, as believers, need be able be, need to be able to spread the gospel and give account for what we believe. Peter said we all must be willing to give an account for what we believe. That means, brothers and sisters, we all need to make sure we understand what we believe. Why do you believe it? This is a personal thing. Amen? Amen. Let's give it up for him again. Amen. 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 Lady Nell is going to get ready to go off. Amen. And do the uh, basic training. If you had not did your basic training, amen. See my bride. Amen. Amen. Now I don't know where was my reader now. <laughs> my reader didn't left me. Amen. Amen. Come on up, D. Amen. We're going back to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13. Amen. Let's get in the book, y'all. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13. Amen. That's where we're going. Matthew 16, verses 13. Testing one. All right, that's hot. Amen. Well, ain't, no, ain't nobody did it. <laughs> That's all right. We're going in. We're going in. Matthew 16. Let's go. Verses 18. I mean, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse, verse 18. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. Yes. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. Mm -hmm. He asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Amen. 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 Jesus right now, brothers and sisters, is having some downtime with his disciples. Amen. He's having some downtime. He's having some chill time. Amen. He's taking a break. Amen. For ministry. Amen. He's taking a break. Amen. And he's doing what I call crowd control right now. Amen. And so he's chilling with his disciples and he asks his disciples a question. He says, who do men say that I am? Right? Because anytime you're being effective, amen, in anything, amen, there will be some gossip about you. Anytime you're being effective, you're going to have chatter about you. How you know that you're being effective is that you do have chatter about you. Are y'all listening to me? If, if, if nobody is saying nothing about you, whether good or bad, that means you're probably not doing nothing. Amen. But anytime you're doing something, amen, somebody's going to have to say something about you. The Bible says, woe when everybody has something good to say about you. Amen. <laughs> Especially when you're doing the work of the Lord. Amen. If everybody's saying you're such a great man, you're such a mighty woman, you're actually, amen, somehow uh, uh, doing something wrong and you're compromising because the devil should not have any good thing to say about you. That. Sometimes you know you're being effective when they call you a devil. <laughs> they called Jesus the devil. They said he was casting out devils by the spirit of Beelzebub. Amen. Amen. But now if you're acting like a devil, they just telling the truth. 
<laughs> but but if you know you're doing the will of the Lord, amen, something should be said about you, amen. Now, now the issue is with this, amen, amen. He's asking his disciples, what are they saying? He's not, he asks his, their disciples, his disciples, what are they saying? That lets us know his disciples was listening. Are y'all listening to me? His disciples were listening to the chatter. Wow. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, amen, and I'm, and I'm going to say, if you are a friend to somebody and this is your dog, you shouldn't listen to gossip about them. Right. If 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 sometimes I quit when they when 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 somebody comes and tells me what somebody else said about me, my question ain't about them. My question is why were they so comfortable in telling you? Ah, oh, that's too much. Why were they so they were comfortable telling you I wasn't nothing? Well, what was your response? <laughs> Yes, you told me. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, whom do man say that I am? Whom does the world say that I am? Who does the... When he says man, everybody's in that category. The believer, the unbeliever, the Pharisee, the Sadducee, Amen. Who does everybody say that I am? What does man say? What is the opinion of man? Unfortunately, right now, brothers and sisters, a lot of the opinion of man is telling the world today who our God is. A lot of this generation that has not really experienced God and really even know about God and this church and everything, they, they are getting their information information about God and about amen God's uh, body from unbelievers a lot of the majority of shows that are written about Christianity and about believers are coming from atheists that new movie that just dropped out hunk for Jesus I said an atheist wrote that the green leaf this is getting wrote by unbelievers. Wow. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, uh, even even the preacher shows, amen. They're, they're, the people in front of them are believers, but the people that's editing it and producing it are unbelievers. So they edit the script to put out what they believe about it. Jesus, who do man say that I am? Who do man say that I am? I know y'all been listening to him. What are they saying? Continue. That's me. I'm waiting on Lady Nail to read. <laughs> <laughs> they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Amen. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah are one of the prophets. Amen. John the Baptist in the past. Elijah in the past. Jeremiah in the past are just one of the prophets. Amen. It's very easy for people to accept you if you, you, you fit to a certain, uh, you know what, I'm looking for the word. It's, it's very easy for them to accept you if you fit into what they had in, in mind or what they've already known, amen, in their past, amen. It's hard for people to accept you or accept something that's now, that's in the future, that's current. Usually people that rise up and that's current, amen, and that's new, they get rejected. Because they're different from the past. If you came 
like their grandmama came or like their granddaddy came or like the old preacher came, they would accept you. They had faith. They, they, they referred somebody that was now and somebody that was present to somebody that was in the past. They're trying to relive the old days. They're trying to get it like it used to be. They're trying to uh, 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 find a category, but normally only people that can only only thing you can, can compare people to is where you used to be. But Jesus is a new thing. Jesus, he he, it, it's a new thing happening, right? It's a new day, amen. This is a new covenant, amen. But but they can't receive the new, right? They they want to relive the old. You just you you people have faith for where they used to be, how it used to be. They want to relive how it used to be, but Jesus is not into reliving how it used to be. No, don't don't. I, I one time I, I corrected myself when I, I told I told the Lord, I, I wish I could go back to how it used to be. I, have you ever told the Lord I want to be how it used to be when I first got saved? God is not going to do nothing how it used to be. God is always into moving forward. He always tell you, can't you perceive I'm doing a new thing? Amen? You have to have faith for the now. You have to have faith for the future. Amen? Yesterday is gone. And truth be told, they were all wrong. He wasn't Jeremiah. He wasn't Elijah. He wasn't, amen, John the Baptist or just one of the prophets. This lets us know the world has it wrong. The world has it wrong. Their opinion was wrong about Jesus. This was incorrect information. You cannot go to unbelievers, amen, and ask them who your God is. All of their answers were Amen. Continue. Verse 15. But what about you, he asks. Uh-oh. Who do you say I am? Now, now he made it more personal. First he asked about the world. Then he gave them, now, who do you say that I am? The ones that been hanging around me. The ones that claim to know me. The ones that Amen. Have been eating with me and 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 chilling with me and seeing my my miracles. Amen. Right in front of their face. Who do you say that I am? What's your opinion about me? Amen. What's your opinion? What's your opinion about God? Who do you say He is? Who do you say He is? What has God showed you? What has God exposed you to? What is your opinion about God? What is your opinion about God? What do you believe about God? Why are you here this afternoon? Are, are you, you understand? What is your personal opinion about God? Because truthfully, it does not matter what the world says about him. It does not matter the opinion of the world, but it does matter the opinion of those that claim to know him. What is your opinion about him? Right? Just like yourself. It doesn't matter the opinion of others about you, but it does matter what you think about you. And he's asking, if you were my disciple, what you think about me? Who do you say that I am? Do you understand who I am? Or do you just see what I'm doing? Are you so caught up in my blessings that you really don't know who I am? Good God Almighty. Are y'all listening to me? Do you really understand who I am? Are you, uh, 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 am I this building? Am I those songs? Am I, that, am I that man talking about me? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that he is? What is your opinion about him? Who do you say that he is? 
Amen. Go ahead. Verse 16. Simon Peter answered, mm. you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Peter clears his throat and said, I know who you are. He says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. That's who you are. That's why you're able to heal people. That's why you're able to deliver. That's why I see you heal blind Bartimaeus based off who you are. You are the Christ. He's seen him clearly. Now, now, and we'll, we'll deal with a little bit more about that, but I'm thankful that Peter understood but you're telling me nobody else understood that about him, Jesus? Nobody else got, and he's talking to 12 men. And you're telling me out of the 12, only one really seen who he was? And of course, we, we'll deal with that revelation, but only one really seen who he, So what were you doing around him then? What were you caught up in around him? Are, are you just looking at the miracles and you are you just worried about eating the bread? Are you just worried about being somebody in him? Are you just worried about being a preacher? Are you just worried about having a congregation? Like what are you really learning around Jesus? See, because you really can't see who people really are if you're around them trying to find, always trying to get your place in there, trying to shine around them trying to do your thing, seeing what you're going to get out of it, you'll miss the real revelation. Good God of mine. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? If you're only around God for what God can do for you, amen, how God can bless you, amen, what you're trying to get out of being around him, you're going to actually miss the real revelation of who he is. Because I'm shocked that God could only reveal it to Peter. Mm. To reveal this to Peter. That out of all of them, he, he revealed it to Peter. Peter seen him. As he revealed this lets us know, too, and we'll talk about that, but this lets us know, too, there's only a couple of people that really understand who you really are. You, you can't think a whole crowd of people are really going to understand who you really are. Are y'all listening to me? Out of the whole crowd, there's only going to be a couple that can really understand what you're really trying to do. And the only way they can understand that is that God got to reveal it to them. The Holy Ghost got to reveal it to them. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. He said, but my Father has shown you who I really am. The mission I'm really on. It doesn't really tell us about the posture, per se, of Peter, or why he said it. One thing we do understand that Peter did preach uh, uh, the inauguration sermon. He did preach on the day of Pentecost. We do understand that Peter, at that moment, was the leader after Jesus died, per se, of the apostles. Amen. He was kind of like the chief apostle. Uh, and, and then, truthfully, to be a leader, you do need revelation. You got to have revelation. You got to have revelation. You, you, you cannot just lead based off your, your own knowledge, amen, just based off your own intelligence. You need revelation knowledge, amen. You need God to show you who he really is and what he's really trying to do, amen. And, but, but Jesus play, he, 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 he word plays it, amen. Go, go ahead, go to 18. Verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Amen. He, he says, 
and, I, and, and he tells Peter, because Peter means rock. Peter means stone. It means rock. And he told Peter, on this rock, on what rock? On you? No. On that revelation. On that revelation, what I've just shown you of who I am, the Christ, the son of the living God, I'm going to build my church. That's good, chief. I'm building that my church. That literally mirrors. Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Amen, amen. And they built it. The church is built on the knowledge of who Jesus is. My people perish from a lack of. The, the reason they're perishing because they really don't know who I am. They really don't know the word. They really, they're not getting revelation and clarity of who, who I really am. Amen. And I built the body, my, my church, on who I am. Not what I'm trying to be. Who I am. Your life has to be built off who you are. You can't build your life on who you're trying to be. That's what I'm saying. You can't build your life on who you're trying to be. You have to build your life on who you are. Amen. You only can stand on who you are. And you got to go to God as who you are, not who you're trying to be or pretending to be. Amen. One of the things you have to ask God is to reveal you to you. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are in God? Do you really understand your purpose? Do you really understand your assignment? Do you really understand your role? Do you understand why he gave you those gifts and talents and so forth? You have to ask God to reveal you to you so you can stand. Hold on. So you can stand on that. You don't have to try to be nobody else when you understand who you are. You can stay in your own lane when you understand who you are. He said, upon that rock, right there, Peter, upon that testimony, that revelation, I'm going to build my body on that. I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Now, of course, when, when I used to think about the gates of hell, I used to think about uh, hell coming against the church. Right? And we just overcome it. But that's not what it means. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, against it, against the church. Meaning the church is actually coming against hell. And hell is, has gates. And hell is trying to keep people locked up and captive. Wow. And he's telling us, amen, that when you go under that knowledge, when you understand under that, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you go forth under that revelation, amen, can't nothing hold you out. Can't nothing keep you out. When you walk in, understand it, I'm walking in with the Son of the living God. I'm walking under the authority of the Christ Jesus, amen. Whatever you're going after, and whatever he sees you to go after, it got to open up. Good God Almighty. It has to open up. That's why when he went to Lazarus in the grave, and he called, he called Lazarus out the grave, the grave had to open up. The tomb opened up based off that knowledge. Does that make sense? Based off that knowledge revelation is that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. Mm, 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 mm. That's the authority we walk in. That is the power we walk in. That is the power we walk in, that we come in the name of Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Christ the son of the living God, the one that has all power in his hand, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Are y'all listening to me? That is the knowledge we walk in. 
Amen. That is the gospel. That's why, that's why we preach the gospel. That's why Paul said it is the power of God that worketh unto salvation. Amen. It opens the doors. It opens the doors and the captives go free. He said this. When, when, they, when, when, they, when they asked Jesus, when John the Baptist asked, was he the Christ? He said, go tell him the gospel is being preached to the poor. Woo! Said, okay, what does that mean? Or the gospel is being preached to the poor. Okay. Poor people are now hearing a good message. No, 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 no. When you preach the gospel to anybody, it oh, whatever had them tied up, locked up. Woo! You made it out. <laughs> the gospel, the gospel, what'd you say? The gospel opened gates. The gospel's open gates. We made it out. We was tied up by sin and tied up by whatever had you tied up. And you heard the gospel and you believed on Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. And now you sitting here free. It, had to, it got to let you go. It has to let us go. Amen. The church is built on that revelation that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Messiah. Amen. He's the anointed. That is the church. The church is not built on nothing else. Our hope is not in anything else. If your hope is not in Jesus, you're going to fail. Our hope is in Jesus the Christ. How am I going to make it? Jesus. How am I going to be free? Jesus. Who going to help you? Jesus. Who going to bring you out? Jesus. That's what we go in. That's the name that we proclaim. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Whatever you're going through, guess what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. They're going to try to lock you out. Amen. And this is why. Go ahead. 19. Verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Oh. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Uh -huh. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh -huh. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Amen. Now think about that. Now think about that. He just told you about gates. And then he just told you about what? Keys. Hells have gates. The kingdom has. What, what do you need? If you go to a gate, what do you need to open the gate? Keys. So God lets us know whatever is trying to hold us out, I'm going to give you keys that you can get in. I gave you keys. The kingdom have keys. Of course, the gospel is how we open stuff up. It's a key. Amen. It has keys. Amen. And whatever, keys give you access to dimensions. I'm going to give you keys. Amen. To take you into different dimensions. Amen. To open up different stuff, different portals. Amen. I'm gonna give you keys. I'm making you, I'm, I'm making you, I'm giving you authority. Keys mean you have authority. Where's all my keys at? Keys mean you have authority. Amen. I got keys to this building. Amen. I got keys to my house. I got keys to my job. Amen. Keys show your authority. Amen. Keys show where you can go and where you can't go. Are y'all listening to me? The more your life grows in the natural form, the more keys you're going to have. Are y'all listening to me? The more your life grows, the more keys you're going to start having. So if you start getting more uh, 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 property, guess what? More keys you're going to start having. You start getting more automobiles, more keys you start having. You start opening up more businesses, the more keys you're going to have. Amen. Keys show your authority. Good God Almighty. 
Amen. Keys show your authority. That's why, to me, amen, one of the person that has the most authority in the company is the janitor, the biggest servant. Because the janitor usually has the key to everybody, everybody's door. Amen. If you're an employee, you may have the key to your office. Amen. But you don't have the key to that office and that office and that office. But the biggest servant has the keys to all the offices. He can go in everybody's door. That's why you want to be a big servant. Amen. So God can start just giving you every type of key. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm going to give you keys to open up stuff. I'm giving you authority. That's what we were talking about earlier. The priests have authority. Amen. They have authority to open up stuff. Amen. To bind stuff. Hold it to question. To bind stuff. Amen. He said, whatever you bind in earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. Understanding we set the order of this thing. We are supposed to be the head and not the tail. We're supposed to set the order order of this thing amen if it's something that's happening in this dimension that we don't like god says he's given us the power to pull down strongholds amen our weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty through god and able to pull down strongholds so if the church doesn't want something to happen in this earth realm we go in the authority of our christ the son of the living god amen and we say no that's not that's not what we want that's not the order that's not the order I, am i making sense brothers and sisters amen and whatever we want to happen amen we have the authority amen to say no this is what we want to happen. We don't want murder. We want peace. We don't want poverty. We want prosperity. He says, you got the power. You got the power. You got the keys to unloose. We really have the keys as the body of Christ to loose peace on, these, on, our, on, on, on people. But when he said, if they accept you, let the peace that's on you what? All of them. We have to take authority. Amen. In the name of our Lord. Amen. We have to take authority in the revelation that Christ, amen, has all power. Amen. And we have to walk in that authority. That's what the early church did, brothers and sisters. They walked in the revelation of who Jesus was and they took authority in the earth realm. They literally took authority in the earth realm. The devil could not, even when the devil tried to do things to them, if God did not want it to happen, it wouldn't happen. They had authority. But their authority was in the revelation of who God is. Amen? Not in who God was. Not Jeremiah. Not Elijah or one of the prophets, but who God is. Your authority is in who God is. You have keys to open up dimensions. Amen. You have keys. Amen. Amen. To open up portals. Amen. You have keys. Amen. To lock up. Amen. What you want locked up and set free who you want to set free. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. We'll, we'll go a little bit longer. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day, be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Now, now that's interesting. Just, just a couple of verses ago, Peter was saying, Jesus was telling him, the father has revealed to him who he was. 
He was just esteeming Peter. And now Peter then got back in his flesh. And, and Jesus calls him a devil. He was just telling him, the Father has revealed who I was to you. And now Jesus told him, you're a stumbling block to me. Right? Because he still doesn't have full understanding of the purpose and the mission of Christ. Jesus just told him, Jesus told him, this is what's going to happen to me. Right? Jesus, Jesus is omniscient. Jesus just told Peter, right, they're going to kill me. This, this is written. They're going to kill me. Peter tells him, no, they're not. No, they're not. Peter is trying. He doesn't, he doesn't fully understand the purpose of the Messiah, the Christ, and that Jesus came to die. And this was the will of God to kill the flesh. Amen? To kill the flesh. To get, to get the spirit to really flourish, you got to kill the flesh. Peter is now talking carnal. He's talking about worldly stuff. Right? And, and that, that makes sense. But, but what if it's God's will for them to die? Because this was God's will. Uh huh. But, but look, but look how Peter, look how Jesus, look how Jesus, yeah, he, but, but, but look how he's comfortable with telling them this. Look how he has submitted to the assignment where he's telling them. And he's not trying to escape it. He's not trying to get out of it. He's prophesying his own death. This is what's going to happen to me. I'm telling you this, amen, that I'm going to die. And he submitted to the will of God. And Peter's statement of trying to save Jesus' flesh, amen, is trying to pull Jesus out of his submission. Right? Out of his submission. He's giving in. You, you don't know how, we don't know how much Jesus had to pray or all of that to be comfortable with this. And now he's, he's telling his disciples about it and they're, they're, that the enemy is trying to use them to put fear back in Jesus. Stumbling block again. Right? And, and usually, and use, but, but, but he's using the one that just seen who he really was. So he's using somebody that now has Jesus' ear. The enemy will always use people that got your ear. Are y'all listening to me? He will always use people that, that, you, that you take their opinion and, and you think about it. Amen? Amen. He will always use people like that. Amen? Go ahead. It's, it's coming to an ending now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got to kill this flesh. And, and, and you're telling me to save my life. You're telling me to save my life. Well, but, but, he, but he's trying to make him save his own life. I, that's a stumbling block to me. But, but don't put fear back into me. Don't put fear back into me. Amen. I've talked myself into being comfortable with this. And here you telling me something different. Right? You, I, I've noticed when Christ tells you to do something, one, if God tells you to do something, you ought to do it exactly how he tells you to do it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
front. Two, what the enemy will always try to do is send somebody to try to change what he sees. Right? So, as, a, as an example, Christ said, throw this on Friday. First, they're going to try to put fear in you on why you shouldn't throw it on a Friday. They shoot on Friday. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying. And, and, no, and, then, and then if they can't make you change the Friday, they're going to say, well, maybe don't do it on Friday. Do it on Saturday. They're always going to try to adjust what God is telling you. You, you surely won't die, but, but they're going to try to play on your flesh. They're going to try to play on your flesh. He's playing on Jesus' flesh, trying to make you start saving yourself, trying to make you start figuring it out yourself, amen, instead of just submitting to what God has already said. He says, sure, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Get behind me. You're trying to talk me out of God's will. Anything trying to talk you out of God's will, don't receive it. I don't care who said it, who they were to you, mama, daddy, sister, brother. If, it, if they're not agreeing with the Lord said about you and about your purpose, be, don't you have the power to reject it. I don't receive that. You have that power. And Jesus immediately said, get behind me, Satan. I heard Pastor Travis say, mm -hmm. uh, God told me to put the prophet, just tell you to get the Bible so that you go to the prophet that I got. Amen. And they decided to get the prophet. And I didn't tell them to do that. Amen. So that, that they can stand. They did their own thing. But they did their own thing. Amen. 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 He didn't tell you to just go. Like just go. Don't, don't figure out how to save yourself. Just submit to my will. That's my job. You just do what I'm asking you to do. Don't change my plans. Amen? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. COVID hit. Yep. You wouldn't have been doing it at all. <laughs> in the detail. He's in the detail. Amen. That's good. You got to do it exactly the way he says to do it, how he says to do it. Amen. But we did it. Amen. God will, sh I mean, just, just do what he says do at the end of the day. Amen. Just do what he's telling you to do. Amen. What he has revealed to you. Amen. But but Peter's, I mean, unfortunately, sometimes Peter spoke up. He he talked too much. But he didn't have all knowledge about what he was talking about. Yeah. But, but, but at this moment, he was talking out of the flesh. He was talking out of his flesh. He, did, he didn't have the knowledge of what he was talking about. Amen. Yeah, Jesus had, yeah. He's had to repair him. Tell him, tell him if you, if you, if you live by the sword, you're gonna die by him. Amen. Let's continue. Verse twenty-three. Oh no, 24. verse twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, "Whoever wants to be my disciple mm -hmm. must deny themselves and take, and take up their cross and follow me." Uh, and whoever wants, look, look at this invitation. To following Jesus. 
He said, you got to take up your cross and follow after me. In other words, following after me can't be a luxury. You can't follow after me just, just to have a, a, a good life for your flesh. That's what he's saying. He says he offered a cross. He offered, uh, 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 he offered death to follow after him. He says, if you want to follow after me, you got to be ready to die. That's what he's telling you. you be and, and truth be told, guess what? They all died. All the disciples died. So he says, to follow me, are, are, are you willing to pay the cost to follow me? The following me is not, uh, is not about to put... See, that's what's wrong with the church in America. When we, we equate our faith, amen, to the cars we drive and the houses we live in. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said to follow me, this is going to be some persecution. You got to deny your flesh. You going to come against some stuff. Amen. And, and let me say this. The more you start to really walk under his anointing, the more persecution you going to come against. Why are you coming against persecution? When you walk in his anointing and his power, it's because you're driving back the hand of the devil. You're coming against the system of this world. That's why I tell you, when we start to bring the murder rate down, then you're going to see the devil rise up because it is a plot and a plan to have it like that. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Amen. That's how you kind of know, really, in a, in a way... That, that the church in America is not really doing stuff because we ain't coming against enough persecution. Now, of course, we come against spiritual persecution. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, the enemy's always trying to get us to come, you know, coming against stuff. We're coming against uh, all different type of spirits and agendas that have, that have went out into the world. But if the church really stands up and speaks up about this stuff, they'll start trying to take and tear these buildings down. If we really start to stand up and speak up about the agenda of what the world is doing, and we really start to stand on the word of God, and we really start to walk in the power of God, the world will literally come against us. And the reason they're not really just coming against us, because we want, we want their stuff too. God Are y'all listening to me? We want their stuff too. We we want the same. We got the same desires as the world got. We just gonna try to get it through Jesus. But that but Paul and them didn't desire per se big houses and cars and all. Paul and them didn't desire. Paul desired people to be saved and them to be brought into the knowledge of who Jesus is. Amen. That was their desire. That's just what they really wanted, and they walked under that power to such a point that not only the religious people got together, but the coppersmith and Diana, the people that made the silver idols, and all of them came to get together to come against them because they were actually bringing change. They were changing the culture. We're trying to fit in the culture. We're not changing culture. Uh, are y'all listening to me? Well, you're going to suffer with him in this world if you start walking in his authority. You're going to suffer with him. You will suffer with him. If you're going to walk under his authority in this day and age, you will suffer with him. Because there's an agenda. I mean, that, and it's always been, amen, since Satan entered into this world, there's an agenda that wants to keep Christ out of this world. That doesn't want people to worship him. So when you start leading people to worship him and you're bringing change, he's going to come against you. But our, our motive in following Christ can't be just to please our flesh. It, it, it can't just be about if it's comfortable to you. It can, hold on. It can't just be about if it's uh, 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 comfortable to you. It 
can't be about if it just, uh, you're throwing me off. It, it can't be about if it's just comfortable to you or it's just easy for your flesh. I don't mean, I'm not trying to be rude. I, I, you know. <laughs> it, it, it has to be about, you know, him. It has to be about if, if, if it persecutes me. If it, it has to be about if I'm coming against them, I'm still going to do it. Amen. It, 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 has, it has to be about that. I'm going to stand on righteousness regardless. Amen. I'm going to stand on it regardless. Amen. No matter what comes against me. Amen. You can't, you can't schedule Jesus in your life. And where does he fit in at? That, 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 that's not how this works. Amen. Jesus has to be about your life. He has to be the main thing, a part of your life. And and, that, and you're right, Mom. That's a part of the suffering. Hey, you got to do this whether you feel like it, you don't. You got to show whether you feel like it, you don't. It's can't be. He's not into pleasing your flesh. He's into killing your flesh. He's trying to kill the flesh. He's not. He says, if, if, and, and and truth be told. And truth be told, if you are a person that's seeking carnal things through God, God ain't going to give them to you. If he knows all you really want is carnality in me, I'm not going to give it to you. If you are a person that's seeking to do only his will, amen, and to really be about his business, God can trust you. heaven. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and this righteousness and all things shall be better. Because God knows this. When you are a person that is really seeking his will, about his agenda, amen, and you're going to use your earthly possessions for him. See, God knows one thing. Money will get a person like that in trouble. It will speed up the dear death process because you're going to use the finances to invest in the kingdom. And you understand what I'm saying? He knows that's going to speed up your persecution when you're really about it. He knows when I give you that, that's going to speed up your persecution. When, when, I, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, it speeded up his death. The biggest, one of the biggest miracles he did was the one that got him killed. So if you're really about it, right, if you're really about doing his will and driving back the kingdom of darkness, when he, he knows resources, it's going to hurt you. You should know that too, if you're really about it. You, you should know when he make you a millionaire, they coming after you then. Because you're going to use it right to go do some stuff for his name. You're going to use it, the resource to bring forth change. Well, let me tell you, they ain't going to like you about it. They're going to come after you. Are, are y'all listening to me? And he knows that. And he'll give it to you because he knows what you're going to do with it. Right? He knows you're going to use it for his glory. But you got to know. He said, I'll give every, he said, I'll give, I'll give you a hundredfold now in this time. He said, but it's going to bring persecution. That hundredfold I give you gonna, is going to bring persecution to you. Amen. And it ain't going to bring you the American dream, not if you're going to really be about it. No, it ain't. It's going to bring persecution to you. Amen? But we, but we take on the, the mindset that I'm here to give my life away for you anyway. I picked up my cross. Amen? Your life, my life, amen, amen, is your life. Amen? I'm here to give up my life. Amen? I'm presenting my body a living sacrifice unto you. Amen? 
I'm picking up my cross and following after you. It's not my will, but thy will be done. And that then that's what the Lord is really looking for. Well, what are you serving him for? What are we really serving for? What are you what is what what are you really going after in this in this journey with Christ? What are you looking for? Well, what 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 is what is what is your arriving place? Did you have arrived? The the only and I and I'll speak personally. The only thing I'm really looking for is to finish my purpose. That I want to go be with him. I'm a bitch. That's that's really. In my mind, it ain't it ain't about no stuff, no nothing. I was even talking to the Lord yesterday. I was in front of my house, and I was talking to the Lord about all this stuff you gave me. I was talking. I said, none of this means nothing. See, see, you really don't know it. Don't mean nothing to you to after you get it. But you start to realize none of this stuff means nothing. It's just vanity in vain, and it brings no power, and if you're not careful, it'll take you away from me. Oh. Are y'all listening to me? No, no, I, I, I was telling him that. I was looking at my Mercedes. I said, none of that means nothing. Car don't mean nothing. I'm, I'm just being truthful. Fine, none of it means anything. If you're not using it for God, if you're not using your life to really fulfill the purpose that God gave you, it's empty. It's all vanity. It really is, y'all. I'm telling you, it really is, y'all. It really is empty. If you need stuff to get self-esteem, you're empty. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If, if you need stuff to make you feel full, you really need the Holy Ghost. Because it's all empty. See, the world needs cars. The world needs finances. The world needs all that because they don't really have God. Because, because you're trusting in that stuff. As though that stuff has power and it's something when it's nothing, your title ain't nothing. Your position ain't, your, that's right, it, it's nothing. The only thing that really means something is God. The only thing that really means something and that will make you feel fulfilled in your life is to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to be able to do the will of God. That's really it. Everything else is empty vanity. It's all vanity. And, 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 and you can have all of it and you will feel more empty than you ever felt. The people that start to get it more and more and more is one is pulling them further and further away from God. And the more and more they empty. Look, look at the entertainers. Look how empty their lives are. I mean, really look at it. They don't, why nobody look happy? Why nobody look like they got joy? Because it's really all vanity. The only thing that really means something is doing what God put you in this earth to do. That's it. That's it. Everything else is empty, y'all. Huh? Now, of course, we got to work and all that because we live in a world that operates in currency. And, and so, but, 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 this, but this can't be your goal to be something on this side. That, that isn't your goal. They're going to hate you for what you're going to do. Amen? They are. They're going to come against you. The world don't like you. This world don't like you. And if they like you, you're his enemy. <laughs> Amen. We're going to stop right there, brothers and sisters. Amen. We're going to stop right there. We left off at... Uh, and he's going to say with profit of man to gain. We're we getting there too. Amen. Uh, the only thing we want to be focused on in this world today, we're 25, yes, ma'am. Let's keep that mark. That's where we start next Wednesday. 
the, the 16, 25. The only thing that really matters in this world, y'all, is to fulfill the purpose of God that what he called you for. That's the only thing you should be waking up. Outside, I know you got your daily responsibilities and you got to do stuff just to, to live on this side, but, but your main focus and goal, like the main thing that you should be really going after in this world is all you should want to do is fulfill the will of God for your life at the end of the day. That, that's the only thing that says that's the only thing that matters, right? That's the only thing that's really real, amen, is to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Everything else shouldn't matter, amen. But ministry, when God calls you to do something, it's work. It's work. It's work, amen. But you should be willing to work all day for your destiny, for your purpose. I know I am, amen. All right, any quick question? Please, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Those are keys. Forgiveness unlocks the door. It does. Giving. Being thankful. Those are keys. It really does. It really does. It really does. And the, of course the word. The word is the the word is the key. The word is the key that unlocks everything. That's why you have to know the Bible. You gotta know the Bible. It ain't even a, you have to know it. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. He does. You, you remember? That is so true. The more the the more you get into God, the closer you get into God, the more you start to understand who you really are. And you get comfortable in that person. And you're okay with being that person. You're actually okay. I don't have to be like, no, 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 no. At all. At all. Amen. That's good. Thank you, ma'am. That's good. Anybody else? Nah, they, they, they back there having a good class now. Amen. But that's good. That's good, brothers and sisters. Amen. But, but continue to grow yourself in the knowledge of Jesus. So when I ask you who Jesus is, you should be able to give me some scripture. And you should be able to tell me, of course, from the word and as well as from your personal experience. Right? Grow in the knowledge. Uh, Paul said, grow in the grace of God. Grow in the knowledge of God. Understand who Christ is, what he did for you, amen, the power that you possess, amen, in him. Understand that. Walk in that, amen. Make the main thing of your life is to fulfill his purpose and his will for your life, amen? Amen. We can get ready. Let's pray out. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you, Master. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that, Father God, for us to see you clearly, Father God, and know who you are, Father God, the Father has revealed that to us, Lord. The Spirit of God has revealed that to us. Flesh and blood has not revealed, Father God, who you are to us, Father God. But it was our Father in heaven, Father God, that has revealed to us that you are our Christ, Father God, that you are the Son of the living God, Master. And I pray that we live according to that revelation, Master, Father God. I pray, Father God, that our joy comes from that, Master. Our peace comes from that, Father God. Everything we do, Father God, everything, Father God, uh, uh, we will do, Father God, it, it stands on that, Master, that you are are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Master. We bless you, Father God, on this day, Father God. We glorify you on this day, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that we walk under that authority, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you told us, Father God, that hell can't stop us, Master. Hell can't block us, Father God. Everything that is ours, we will receive, Father God. Everything that you put us in this earth to do, we will do, Master. In 
in the name of Jesus, Father God. We bless you on today, Lord. Let us walk under that authority and that power, Father God. Lord, Father God, give us, Father God, uh, uh, the keys, Lord, that will release, Father God, your people, Father God, that will bring us into different dimensions, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we glorify you, Lord. And let us deny the flesh. Let us deny the flesh. Father God, let us deny the flesh, Lord. But let us pick up our cross, Lord, and let us follow after you. In the name of Jesus. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you, Lord. We love you and we adore you. You're all we have, Father God, and you're all we need. You're all we want. You're all we want, Father God. Father God, you're, let you be the, uh, 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 the thing that our appetite desires, Father God. Take our hearts off the stuff of this world, Father God. Take our affections off the things of this world, Father God, and put our affections on you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Hallelujah. Let us as a church become holy again unto you, Lord, that all we want is you, all we desire is you, Lord. All we want to do is what you put us in this earth to do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we bless you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Amen.